I have beaten each of the current operation levels on Ruthless Difficulty in Space Marine 2, and I can easily say there are some levels that are just better than others. So today, I will be ranking them. I'll be looking at their objectives, key moments, NPCs, and overall how fun the level was to play through. Feel free to let me know which is your favorite and least favorite level and why in the comments. Spoiler warning if you haven't played these maps yet. I will be showing them in great detail. Number 6, Reliquary. We are headed to Demirium for this one, where we'll have to navigate the catacombs and close the warp beacon, with the main enemy on this map being the Chaos Marines. Things start off fine, you're fighting Chaos Marines, defiling graves along the way, then you're blocked at the catacombs, and the door you need to go through is locked, and the system to unlock it is offline. So you search a bunch of dead servitors for a replacement fusion core. However, that isn't enough. Then you have to escort a server skull to find a body for re-internment. This objective is is annoying. I shouldn't have to hold a server skull by his Cat 5 cables and walk it around to look for a body to exhume. It can fly. We have Vox channels. It can scan tunes on its own and just let us know when it finds one. I have Heretic to kill. Once you finish this side chore, you head out the door and down the elevator. Here you'll see a Heldrake, just killing anything that is on the bridge with its Hellfire. Friend, foe, it doesn't matter. In the eyes of the Heldrake, if you are on the bridge, you need to die. So you fight your way through this pass, slaying Chaos Marines and dodging Heldrake fire. This is a pretty fun moment. When you reach the temple, the game decides to teach you a new mechanic, conveniently the one you need against the boss in the next room. This boss is pretty disappointing. You have to activate sigils that match what is shown in the windows while fighting waves of Chaos Marines while dodging occasional Heldrake fire. Once matched, you get a window of time to start shooting the Heldrake. Rinse, repeat, until the Heldrake is dead. Personally, I would have rather just had the fight be in phases. Phase 1 would mostly be the same, but with a few more sigils to match. And after one round of matching sigils, that's when Phase 2 starts, where the boss actually fights us in melee range. Something about there being a Dragon-type boss and a Sword and Shield class, and they can't melee each other just ain't right. Number 5, Ballistic Engine. Alright, we're on Avericks for this one, fighting the Tyranids. We have to commandeer a Nova Cannon warhead and then deploy it by rail to a hive city. While you make your way to the bomb storage room, you will get hit with these dust storms to barely see anything and have to fight and shoot with low visibility. This isn't hard, but it's more of a nuisance than fun. Eventually you make your way to the bomb storage room. Here you'll have to activate a machine and wait for transfer protocols to complete, meanwhile fighting waves of Tyranids. Around the room are consoles and at points of the transfer, an issue will arise and you have to go to the designated console to continue the process. Once that's done, you end up outside again in the dust storms just for a bit and then you head back inside until you hit a control room. This part's interesting to me. After clearing off an obstacle that's in the way, you didn't get this cool visual of a group of what I assume are servitors dragging the warhead by cables to load it on a train. I don't know why the Tyranids are not attacking them. Must be all that plot armor they have on. A bunch of skirmishes later, you're finally at the train station and have to fight off more hordes of Tyranids as you charge the engines to send the train off to the Hive City. You'll have dust storms come through, charging interruptions, and a bit where you have to clear out the Tyranids that are attacking the train itself. Fun ending fight, but the level as a whole is brought down by the dust storms and just not a lot of interesting moments happening other than at the end. Number 4, Vox Liberatus. Still on Averax, we have to identify the source of the Vox jamming and cleanse the area of heretical influence. Now it's getting spicy, as we have both Tyranid and Chaos forces to contend with. You start off fighting the Tyranids as you make your way to the source of the Vox jamming. While riding up an elevator, it becomes clear where the source is, as hordes of Tyranids are being blocked by warp shielding set up by the Thousand Suns. Our plan now is to take down the warp shield and let the factions fight each other. As we make our way through, we find that lesser sorcerers are using Chaos altars to hold up the barriers, so we have to take control and destroy the these chaos altars. Destroy one in a building and then have a large skirmish outside for another. This brings down the barriers and we get a pretty cool scene of Tyranid prods dropping and overwhelming chaos forces. A little bit ahead of this, we end up in a large open area with a bunch of water. It's a pretty big fight against the chaos forces that for most runs is pretty standard fare. I did have one run though, where the chaos forces in this section were in a skirmish with a decent amount of Tyranids and I'm a sucker for two AI forces fighting each other. I wish this would happen more often because it was really cool to watch them fight. A few skirmishes later, we have to take an elevator down, and this gets crazy. Waves of chaos forces will keep warping in, and you have to survive the way down. Sometimes the elevator gets stuck, and you have to find the controls to get it going again. The snipers that are posted on the above levels are the worst, since they will keep taking pop shots at you, and you have to scan the levels above to shoot them. Honestly, the elevator bit is fun, but lasts a little too long. After surviving the elevator, you will engage in the end fight. A bunch of chaos altars are set up, powering a dude who looks to be taken over by a demon, and this is causing the 
Vox Gem. So we fight off more Chaos Forces while taking down the Chaos Altars and dodging warp attacks from the demon. The end fight here is alright, but sometimes can just be a lot of standing around waiting for altars to become vulnerable. This level has so many cool ideas to it that if tweaked or were more consistent would have put this higher on the list. Like after taking down the warp shield, it should be a three-way fight to the end. Yes, including extremist enemies. You know what? I want more than that. I want to see a Carnifix fight a Hellbrute. Number three, the fall of Atreus. Back over to Demirium, we have to get to the decommissioned battle barge and prepare the sword of Atreus for launch. Getting there is a difficult and long journey. Early on though, we come across an absolute legend of a dreadnought as he's slaying the forces of chaos all around him. He walks and fights with us, eventually opening up the way forward. A true hero and my favorite NPC of these operation maps. After that, you have to activate a crane to move an obstacle that is in your way. On most runs, this is straightforward. You kill the forces of chaos while waiting on the crane, and even if the crane malfunctions, it is typically easy to restart. However, there is the rare run where finding the consoles to restart the crane is very difficult, and juggling the enemies and the objective is rough. Once you're done with that, you take a turbulent stroll through some cool looking catacombs and fight your way up a ramp to get to the front door of the Mechanicus compound. There are too many chaos forces to open the doors and you will have to clear them out. Luckily, that amazing dreadnought is here to help you fight. So a glorious battle ensues with whirring chainswords, gunfire, and viscera. It is at this point you have to say goodbye to the dreadnought. Once in, you are then amongst the Adeptus Mechanicus as they're figuring out how to get the Sword of Atreus back into the air. It's pretty cool to see them at their stations, looking at holograms and working at their jobs. We are told we have to charge up a battery using a trolley system. And this next area is chaotic as we have to hold off waves of enemies while escorting the tram with the battery to be charged. There's also this mechanic of having to align the track correctly at certain junctures and this is pretty fun. However, this section is sometimes padded by having to hit two charging stations. I say cut that, the level is already too long. Just have us charge it at one of the terminals and then let us continue on to place it to the ship. That's my main problem with this level, it's too long. Easily the longest of the six levels. Since the payout for each level is the same, I'm not going to spend 40 minutes on this one when there are levels that can be done in 20. Now, this is an awesome level with a fun journey through varied environments while also fighting alongside a badass NPC. However, if I'm just trying to level up characters or weapons, I'm going to skip this one. Number two, Inferno. Now we're off to the jungles of Kadaku where we have to set up a trap for the Tyranid Swarm and time our ambush to decimate the enemy. After a decent walk through some swampy jungle and killing plenty of Tyranid abominations, we find ourselves at an Astra Militarum camp that has been overrun by the Tyranid forces. We have to clear out the camp of Tyranids and check the bodies of the fallen for demolition codes. Once retrieved, we continue on. After a large skirmish outside of the refinery, we go in and begin to prime the bomb and set up our trap. As this is all getting set up, we have to protect the generators from Tyranid swarms and or flip a switch to fix the crane alignment. This is a fun moment as you're running around and killing Tyranids and setting up your bomb. Once the bomb is set, you will travel a decent distance and kill a large number of Tyranids to get the observation deck. It is here where you will see the massive Tyranid army marching to battle and will set off your trap once it's time. However, the Tyranids have become aware of your plans and set off waves to combat you. You will have to survive wave after wave of Tyranid forces until it is time to set off the bomb, which is a glorious sight to behold. I remember when playing the campaign and hearing about this mission, being excited to play it and see the explosion. It lived up to my expectations. I really like the contrast of the lush jungle setting into the cold industrial complex. Also, the final horde mode is a lot of fun with a big bang finale. No gimmicks like dust storms, just a solid and fun level. And now for our number one pick in my favorite operation level, Decapitation. Back on Avrex, we are tasked to combat the Tyranid forces, set up explosives onto bridge supports, and slay the Hive Tyrant. We start off fighting our way through a building and rooftops to make our way to the bridge supports. Here we will have a random amount of charges, between 2 and 5, placed all around the building. Meanwhile, fighting against waves of Tyranids. Once these charges are set, you head up an elevator and meet up with the Imperial Guard to await the Hive Tyrant. First though, you have to survive an assault of lesser Tyranids, this is a cool moment. You can see them coming from a good distance away and set off explosions that are in their path. After surviving that wave, you see the big bad hive tyrant as he lets out a monstrous roar. You trigger your charges, causing a giant bridge support statue to fall right on top of them. Debris flying everywhere. It is awesome to see. However, it turns out this does not kill the hive tyrant. So we continue on and give chase to finish the job. What's really cool about this next stretch of skirmishes is that we keep seeing the hive tyrant as we progress. It turns out the hive tyrant had us chase him into a Vox dead zone, showing off his own battle intelligence. Eventually we catch up to him and begin the only proper boss fight out of the six levels. This fight is fun, with the Hive Tyrant having tricky attack patterns, calling in additional forces, and having a second phase. Easily the highlight of the level. Also, this is arguably the shortest level of the six. 
which makes it great for leveling weapons and characters. And the city is gorgeous to look at with so much happening in the background. This was an easy pick for the number one spot. As new operation maps come out, I will cover them and place them amongst this list. So subscribe if you'd like to see that.